a, a word of, of welcome and thanks from Cindy and I. Um, and uh, here it is uh, on the Lord's Day, and uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to be able to worship together and in kind of an in-home setting with you and uh, listening to what the Lord has for us. Um, just thank you for your faithfulness. What a joy it is to, to serve in a church family that, that is caring and loving and um, and most of all, that's been lifting us up in prayer, and our, uh, both our church family and staff, and for Cindy and I. So thank you for your faithful love. And um, let us let us approach this time with great expectation of God's uh, God's joy. He He is the one who heals us. He is the one who restores to us the joy of our salvation. And uh, He is the God of restoration. So we're looking forward to. The Word uh, of God who restores our hearts, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life that encourages us together. And just the days ahead, I believe God's got some great things in store for us. Um, and I'm um, looking forward to seeing you all soon. God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Welcome to the Merriman Road Baptist Church virtual worship service on this beautiful Lord's Day. Uh, we are happy and excited to have you all here this morning as we are not able to worship in person, but we are excited to still be able to lead you all this morning. So if you would, please allow me to start this service off with a call to worship. I'm going to be reading from Psalm chapter 8. It says, Yahweh, our Lord, how magnificent is your name throughout the earth. You have covered the heavens with your majesty. Because of your adversaries, you have established a stronghold from the mouths of children and nursing infants to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I observe your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you set in place, <clears throat> what is man that you remember him, the son of man that you look after him? You made him little less than God and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him Lord over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all the sheep and oxen, as well as the wild animals and birds in the sky and the fish of the sea that pass through the currents of the seas. Yahweh, our Lord, how magnificent is your name throughout the earth. So, I would ask you this morning to lift up your voices to our magnificent God as we sing. I'm glad you're here to worship with us this morning, and I ask that you would just lift your voices with ours as we sing about nothing but the
we gather together for worship today, will you pray with me? Father in heaven, we come before you today desiring to, to worship you, to give you praise that you are due. Father, you are holy and you are pure and, and majestic. And Lord, our desire is to worship you as our king, our good and loving king, our merciful, benevolent king. Uh, Father, you are so gracious to us and so kind. Uh, your, your love reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Father, as we gather as your people this morning, I pray that we would experience you afresh, that we would be reminded of your love that has been demonstrated to us through your son, Jesus Christ, as he died for us on the cross and rose victoriously over the dead. Father, may you draw us near to you as we draw near as well. Father, we, we desire to hear your voice, to know your kindness, and to experience you afresh today, that we would be challenged and molded and shaped as your people. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, we want to welcome you this morning to our online worship service. We're so glad that you're taking time to worship the Lord with us together. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, it's, it's been a challenging time. Uh, but we thank you for your patience as we seek to gather together and uh, find ways to still do that, even though many of us are in quarantine. We look forward to gathering again soon. And thank you for your faithfulness and prayers uh, for your church family that's, that's sick during this time. We ask you to continue to pray for each family, each person who is ill. Um, and we want to welcome you if you're a guest today. We're so glad that you've taken time to join us. We'd welcome you to just check in to let us know uh, that you're here. You can do that by using your cell phone by texting the letters MRBC to the number 734-421-0472. You'll get a text message with a link that will allow you to fill out a guest form to let us know a little bit about you and we then have the opportunity to reach out to you and, and help you connect to the life of our church. Maybe you're interested in connecting to a, a small group Bible study or another ministry in our church. We would love that opportunity to talk with you more um, as you seek to serve the Lord and follow Jesus in your own life. <clears throat> uh, we're so excited about, uh, again, coming up this week is a marriage conference, the Love Song Marriage Conference. It starts on Friday night at 645. We'll go for a couple hours on Friday night till about 9 p.m., and then we'll regather again on Saturday morning, right around 845 until noon. Um, and so Phil and Melody Box are going to be coming uh, to lead us in that conference, and we want you to make sure that you're a part of it. So if you haven't registered, please do that. You can do that on our website. That way we can plan for you, and we look forward to gathering together uh, to be encouraged in our marriages uh, as Phil and Melody come and uh, help us at the Love Song Marriage Conference. So make sure you sign up for that today. Uh, we also want you to be reminded that as in your faithfulness and giving, uh, we're able to continue to serve uh, the Lord and serve our community uh, through your giving. And so as you give, remember you can give uh, both through the uh, regular giving envelopes you have. Maybe you want to mail that into the church this week or drop it off. You're welcome to do that. Or you can go online at mrbc.us and you can click on the give button there. And uh, we just look forward to continuing to, to serve the Lord with one another. And also mark your calendars because up, coming up in May, is the biker blessing. You'll want to be a part of that. We're excited about what's coming up as we get to reach out to our community, those particular with uh, biker enthusiasts. We need your help in that, and so uh, plan to be a part of that as well this May. If you would, take your Bibles and open with me to John chapter 10 this morning. Uh, we're going to be considering the passage of Jesus as the Good Shepherd. John chapter 10 in your Bibles today. As we consider uh, this uh, imagery <clears throat> that, that the Lord is our shepherd, of course that means we are like sheep. And sheep need a shepherd. And thankfully we have a good shepherd. God through the scriptures uses imagery uh, repetitively of his people as sheep and himself as a shepherd. Of course, we remember Psalm 23 as one of those great psalms that reminds us that the Lord is our shepherd. We have nothing that we lack. Um, now, as, as we consider that imagery of God as our shepherd and we as sheep, 
Just imagine some of the similarities uh, between sheep and people. Now, of course, the, the scriptures tell us, one, that sheep wander and go astray, just like we do in our sin. Consider the things in your own life that, that cause you to get distracted and wander off from the intentions that God has for you. Things that distract you from the most important things in life of, of loving God and loving your neighbor. It could be that you get focused on a job or a, maybe a hobby, um, your, your phone or social media or your bank account or just things that you just pick up flippantly. Uh, we can become neglectful of our relationship with the Lord or our relationships with other people. So sheep wander and go astray, but sheep are also vulnerable creatures. They're vulnerable to predators who will attack. And so are we. We are vulnerable creatures. When we think about just how frail we are, think about how a, a virus that we can't even see is literally, uh, you know, just decimated hundreds of thousands of people uh, in our country. Uh, we are vulnerable, um, but, but we are more vulnerable to attacks from the enemy, uh, Satan. When we wander, we, we open ourselves up for spiritual attack. We, we slip into what may seem to be a harmless sin of neglect. Uh, but what we really do is we open the door for the enemy to gain leverage in our lives that can cause even greater damage. We are vulnerable to attack as sheep, and so sheep need the care of a good shepherd. And so do we as God's people. Thankfully, he is that shepherd. And God has had entrusted his people. As we look at this passage today, uh, we, we are reminded that the leaders of Israel were to shepherd God's people. They were to lead and guide them. However, many would seem to lead them astray or to try to cause them harm. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 23 and, and Ezekiel 34 are just two examples of where uh, the Lord speaks out against those shepherds that were in place over his people for their lack of faithfulness, for their uh, leading God's flock astray. So today, as we, as we seek God in his word, let us see that we, like sheep, need the care of the good shepherd. Let's read together in John chapter 10, beginning in verse 1. Truly I tell you, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is a shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own outside, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice, and they will never follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from him because they don't know the voice of strangers. Jesus gave them this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Jesus said again, Truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, since he is not the shepherd and doesn't own the sheep, leaves them and runs away when he sees a wolf coming. The wolf then snatches and scatters them. This happens because he is a hired hand and doesn't care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. But I have other sheep that are not from this sheep pen. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. 
Would you pray with me as we seek God's blessing and direction in his word this morning? Father in heaven, you are our good shepherd. And Lord, we need your care. We need your guidance this morning. We need your protection. Father, as we open your word, would you give us insight into helping us see how we are like sheep, that we are weak, we are frail, we wander, and we need your shepherding in our lives. Father, oh, would you shepherd us by your word this morning? Lord, give me your words to share with my brothers and sisters and with others listening that need the care of the Good Shepherd this morning, that you would guide us into those green pastures, that you would guide us into that abundant life that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as, as we consider the imagery uh, given to us by Jesus himself today, I believe that really this focal passage of these 18 verses that we read is verse 10, where it says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it in abundance. Today, we need to be reminded that abundant life is found in Jesus alone, the gate and the good shepherd of the sheep. Jesus is the source of the abundant life that God desires for us to have, and, and he gives us a passage here rich with imagery that describes the life that he provides for us. And primarily, he's describing himself using two images, the gate and the good shepherd. And when we think of ancient life tending flocks, it helps us to remember several things. One, that sheep were led by shepherds to graze in, in open fields uh, by day, but they could be called back to the sheep pen at night. The pen could be circular or square enclosure made by wood or stone. And there was only one gate where the sheep could enter in or exit out from. This was the gate of the sheep pen. And the shepherd would lay down at the entrance of the gate and be the gate for the sheep. In this way, sheep would be prevented from wandering off in the night. And the enclosure would also provide protection from predators, from wolves or, or bears. And using the imagery, Jesus relates himself to the gate and as a good shepherd. So let, let's take each of these in turn. Let's first consider how Jesus is the gate of the sheep pen. So just like that shepherd would lay himself out across the gate or the entrance of the sheep pen, Jesus is also the gate of the sheep pen. So what does this mean for us? Well, Jesus explains the imagery. There are four truths to consider that come out of this imagery as the gate of the sheep pen. First of all, Salvation, security, and satisfaction is found through the gate that is Jesus. Read again with me verse 9. It says, I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. You see, entering the gate means salvation. Sheep wandering in the open field could only come back to the sheep pen through that single gate. The gate was the shepherd. He alone could grant them entrance to the sheep pen to get them out of danger. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 6 is a very descriptive as to how Jesus provides this salvation uh, to sheep outside of the sheep pen. Here Isaiah writes, We all went astray like sheep. We have all turned to our own way. And the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all. You see, this is a different sheep imagery here, but, but as the gate, Jesus can provide the way to security inside of the sheep pen. Now, of course, that sheep pen is, is the dwelling place of God. It is the, the kingdom of God. And this is to say that we can escape the danger of wandering in our own sin. And wandering in our own sin leads to death. The danger of our sin as sheep is death. The danger of wandering is death. The way we escape danger is through the gate. And through the gate, we can find security and life. 
So as the gate, Jesus provides us salvation. He does that because he laid down his life for us. He died a sacrificial death for us to give us atonement and covering and forgiveness of our sin so that we could be forgiven and given promise of eternal life. So we must enter the gate that is Jesus in order to be saved. The other imagery that we gain here is, is that of security, being able to come into that gate. We find a refuge uh, from storms and weather and, and from predators. Uh, we find that in Christ. From the, from the shaky circumstances in life, we find a refuge in Christ as we would enter by him. We also find pasture. We see that uh, as the gate, Jesus mentioned that you can come in and go out and find pasture. Well, pasture for a sheep is, is a place of rest. It's a place of nourishment. It's a place of satisfaction for the sheep. And so as the gate, Jesus can provide the way for satisfaction in our lives, the abundant life that God would have for us. And the words of Psalm 23 remind us of this, that the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I lack. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He restores my soul. Uh, Jesus is like that shepherd who, who leads us out into green pastures. He leads us to find nourishment that we need in his word and by his Holy Spirit that builds us up from the inside out. Jesus alone can provide the life that we need, the abundant life that we desire that we can have satisfaction in our soul. Jesus is uh, the gate. So satisfaction, security, salvation are found through the gate, but it's also crucial to recognize that there is only one entrance to the sheep pen. Just as there is only one entrance to the sheep pen, there is only one entrance to the way of salvation. There is only one entrance into the kingdom of God, and it is through Jesus Christ. Uh, I think it's clear from this imagery here that there is only one gate, and you must enter by me. I am the gate. But there are other places where Jesus highlights this truth. In John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Then in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, uh, the Apostle Peter says for us, There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That is, if anyone desires to be saved, if anyone desires to live forever, eternal life is only found through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the only way. You can't find salvation through your own goodness the Bible's clear that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and, and none of us can come into the presence of a holy God in our sin. We can't find our own goodness through religion, for, through the, the doing of rituals and trying to overcome our sin through our own efforts. It doesn't work. We will always fall short of God's standard. And our, our righteousness in the view of God is like a polluted garment. Uh, we are incapable of coming into the presence of a holy God in our sin. You can't find the way of salvation in any other way than Jesus. Which leads to the next point. Um, that thieves and robbers will try to enter other ways than the gate. L look with me again in verse 1 of chapter 10. He says, Truly I tell you, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. You see, there are some that will try to enter into the sheep pen through other ways. But they are imposters. They're not sheep. They're trying to do harm to the, the fold of God. You see, there are some who seek the harm of the sheep, who will try other ways to get into the sheep pen. Just like a robber would try to go into the sheep pen of of the shepherds at night to perhaps steal sheep or, or harm the sheep, or maybe a wolf would try to jump in over the, the fence in the night to harm the sheep. They're really thieves and robbers. They're not sheep. Sheep have to enter by the gate. People 
can be among the people of God who are not really sheep, that is, who are not really followers of Christ. They can wreak havoc among God's people. They can cause division, discord, and, and harm among the people of God. And we are to beware of those who would come to us in Christ's name, but in, inwardly be ravenous wolves. Uh, Paul warns us to have nothing to do with such people. Those who bear the name of Christ yet live in the lack of unity and lack of fellowship, uh, who sow discord and, and hatred among God's people, have no place among the people of God. And so those who walk in darkness have nothing to do with the light. Thieves and robbers will try to weasel their way in. And, and Christ warns us of these things. They will happen. But we must be on guard. We need the care of the shepherd again in this. Thieves and robbers will enter under other ways. But remember, the shepherd of the sheep enters by the gate. Look at verse 2 with me. It says, the one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. It's kind of interesting here as as we consider this passage. I know there's two images that we're trying to kind of grapple with, uh, but there is some flexibility as as to how uh, this kind of parabolic story uh, helps us understand. So that you know, it's it's hard to interpret sometimes because we think of well, it must each image must mean only one thing. Well, there's actually some flexibility in this one because of the way it's written uh, that the shepherd. On the one hand, is described the good shepherd. Jesus is described as a shepherd, but he's also described as the gate. Well, here we have the, sh the one who is the shepherd enters by the gate. So is the shepherd entering by himself? Oh, we don't have to really get tied up too much in that. I think, I think what, is, what is meant here by this is that the shepherd doesn't sneak his way in to his sheep. He has no need to. Uh, Jesus came to his sheep the way that the prophets predicted. Jesus came as the Son of God, who came as the fulfillment of many prophecies, one who would be born of a virgin, who would be born in Bethlehem, who would be born as a descendant of David, as a blessing to the nations from Abraham. And so Jesus fulfilled all these promises. He came among his people, the people Israel, the way the prophets predicted. And only one person could fulfill the role of the Good Shepherd. Of course, we read Psalm 23 that very clearly describes that the Lord is the shepherd. And so when we think of the Messiah, the one who would come as the good shepherd, um, if it's Jesus, who Jesus proclaims himself very clearly as the shepherd of the sheep, then not only is he the, the descendant of Abraham and of David and in the fulfillment of all these prophes prophecies from the prophets, but he is God himself. He is the Lord because the Lord is my shepherd. And only one person can fulfill the role of the good shepherd. It is God himself who came in Christ as the good shepherd. And so the second image that is given helps us understand that the abundant life that Jesus gives us is that, um, that the image there is that Jesus is the good shepherd of the sheep. And this second image gives us eight truths to consider. First of all, is that the good shepherd knows the names of his sheep. Look at verse 3. It says, The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls them by name and leads them out. This is one of the, the amazing things about a shepherd, is that he knows all of his sheep by name. Uh, he, he leads them by his voice. Uh, it's, it's an amazing thing that sheep could recognize a human voice and be able to call them to himself. Um, but that is the truth about God when it comes to us as his, him being our shepherd and, and we being his sheep, is that Jesus knows us personally. He calls you by name. Uh, he knows you personally. He knows your inmost thoughts. He knows your desires and your longings. He knows your hurts and your pains. He knows your joys and your fears. He knows you, and, and he knows you even in your sin, and he loves you still. You see, the good shepherd knows the names of his sheep. 
What a comforting truth that is to know that God knows you by name. The creator of all heaven and earth knows you by name. What amazing love. The good shepherd also leads in front of his sheep. As we continue in that uh, verse 3, it says he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out and he goes ahead of them. You see, Jesus is always out in front calling us to follow him. When he gives us the invitation to, to join us in the pilgrimage of faith, he calls us, follow me. He gave that invitation to his disciples, Peter, James, and John, and Philip, and Andrew. He gave it to Matthew as he was sitting at the, the tax collector's booth. Simple words. Follow me. And as our good shepherd, Jesus desires us like sheep to follow him. He's the one that's out ahead. He's the one leading us. And he leads us graciously as a servant. Uh, th think of the opposite where if Jesus just said, go ahead and not follow me. What insecurity would that bring to you to know that your shepherd left you out kind of high and dry? To expect you to fight off danger and battles ahead. But that's not how our shepherd operates. No, he, he doesn't ask us to go anywhere that he himself has not already. He leads us as a servant. He doesn't ask us to do anything that he himself has not already done or supplied the need for. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tested in every way that we are, yet without sin. So Jesus calls us to follow him as sheep following a shepherd. Um, and, and we can follow him confidently because where he goes, he is victorious. Where he goes, he wards off the enemy. He has conquered sin and death. He has defeated Satan at the cross. And he has given to us the victory and he calls us to follow him. Now, of course, following Jesus isn't an easy thing. It's, it is a thing that requires our faith requires that we would trust him as our shepherd. He calls us to go to the places where he's gone. Of course, we know that Jesus went to the cross. He laid down his life. And as a, a servant is not greater than his masters, we too can expect uh, to have to sacrifice in the Christian life, to, to be willing to give of ourselves. Not so that we would earn salvation, but because it is the way of the cross. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Following Jesus means daily dying to ourself, our own selfish desires, and learning to live in the power of the resurrection, the power that he gives us. He calls us to die to ourselves, but he himself died for us. It is his example that we seek to follow as we lay down our old lives in order to live the new life, the resurrected life with him. So Jesus is the good shepherd who leads us out in front. He is out in front of his sheep, but the good shepherd also, thankfully, he leaves none of his sheep behind. Sometimes we fear that perhaps in the, in the Christian journey, like maybe we weren't really sheep. Maybe we aren't really a follower of Christ. But the truth of God's word is that anyone who is truly trusted in Jesus as Savior and Lord, he, he, he holds on to us in his right hand and he never lets us go. Here in, in chapter 10, verse 4, he says it this way. He says, when he has brought all his own outside, he goes ahead of them. He brings all his own. Every one of them. He, he doesn't leave any behind. Jesus cares and, and, and perseveres and, and preserves every single sheep. In chapter or Luke chapter 15, we're reminded of this in the parable of the lost sheep, that, that the shepherd goes out, will leave the 99 and go after that lost sheep because he loves that sheep, cares for them. He will bring them back to that hundred. The sheep are secure in the hands of the shepherds. He will not leave any behind. That is, if you are his sheep, you can't be unsaved. 
Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord, neither height nor depth, nor things present nor things to come, nor any other created thing will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is the amazing grace of God is that his salvation is secure. It is his salvation after all. He is the God of salvation. He is the one who provides that salvation. And nothing can change, uh, nothing can take us from the hand of God. So the sheep are secure in the hands of the shepherd. He leaves none of his sheep behind. But if you don't follow, if you're not following, it's because you're not a sheep. If Because maybe you really are left behind, well, maybe it's because you don't know the voice of the shepherd. Here we see that's another indicator uh, that sheep know the shepherd. And here we an another truth that we can consider is that the shepherd has a familiar voice that the sheep will follow. In chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, it says, The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from him because they don't know the voice of strangers. This is an amazing thing that sheep know. They will follow the voice of their shepherd. Um, a, a seminary professor was in the ancient land and, and observed this as four different shepherds had their sheep all in the same sheep pen. And he, as each shepherd in turn called their sheep, he watched though that one flock divide into four flocks. And each of, the, each of the sheep that knew the voice of their own shepherd followed after their shepherd. I'd encourage you to, to try finding a video, maybe on YouTube, and, and look up uh, simply uh, of sheep responding to the voice of a shepherd. And it's amazing that they won't listen to anybody else but their shepherd. And so we, as, as followers of Christ, we must learn to listen only to the voice of our shepherd, the Lord. Uh, we... We need to learn to flee the voice of strangers, to ignore the voice of strangers and the enemy, and only listen to the voice of our good shepherd, the one who leads us into those green pastures, that leads us into security. Because if we recognize the voice of the shepherd, the voice of the shepherd provides what we need, the life and the protection that we need. Next and, and very importantly, the good shepherd sacrifices for his sheep. Chapter 10, verses 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus, again, he uses very emphatic language. He uses, again, here, the covenant name of God, ego a me, I am. I am the good shepherd. He's equating himself with the Father God. He's, he's equating himself with the God of Psalm 23, the Lord who is the shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd and he lays down his life for the sheep. You see, Jesus left heaven and he, and he came to earth to live life among his sheep. Uh, he, he lived uh, life in human form. Just as we, just as we do as sheep, he, Jesus endured life as a man, as a human, and, and lived among us and, and lived faithfully to God. But then he, he lived sacrificially, serving his fellow man, meeting the needs, performing miracles, casting out demons, healing the sick, the lame, and the, and the blind. And then he would die a sacrificial death. He died for the sheep. Jesus died for the sheep to save them. The hired hands flee when danger comes. It says here, because he is not the shepherd uh, and he doesn't own the sheep, he leaves them and runs away. You see, the hired hands would, would flee the sheep when danger comes. If, if a wolf came, he didn't really care about the sheep. But the shepherd cares about the sheep. The shepherd would lay his life down for the sheep. And when Satan and his and his demons are trying to come at you. Jesus, Jesus had enough of it. And he laid his laid himself down, allowing death uh, to to conquer him for but a moment, 
but then to rise victoriously so that we could be forgiven and given abundant life. The good shepherd sacrifices for his sheep. And, and also the good shepherd, shepherd brings all of his sheep together. Chapter 10, verse 16, it says, But I have other sheep that are not from this sheep pen. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. Then there will be one flock and one shepherd. You see, Jesus came as the shepherd of the Jews. But Jesus called to the nations as other sheep would become part of his flock. See, Jew and Gentile would come together in Christ to be one flock, one people of God. And so Jesus does that for us. He brings us from all different backgrounds, all different uh, economic sta statuses, all different ethnicities, and he brings us into one people so that we would worship him together as, as many different sheep, black sheep, white sheep, speckled sheep, coming together to, to worship that one shepherd king that we have. There is no distinction between Jew, Jew and Greek, but all are one in Christ Jesus. And so the good shepherd brings all of his sheep together. Next, the good shepherd is also loved by the father. Chapter 10, verse 17 says, This is why the Father loves me. So the Father loves the Good Shepherd. He is his only Son. He is his obedient Son. He is his able Son. He is one with the Father. Jesus already made the claim, I am the Good Shepherd. He is the Lord of Psalm 23. Jesus is the good shepherd, and he is loved by the Father. So we can know that we're following God's, uh, God's servant, God's shepherd in his son. The good shepherd is loved by the Father, but the good shepherd willingly gave his life for us and took it up again. Chapter 10, verses 17 and 18 says, I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. You see, friend, Jesus laid down his life for you and for me as the Good Shepherd. He laid down his life on the cross for your forgiveness and for mine. And he took it up, that is, he raised from the dead three days later, to prove that he can give you the abundant life that you desire. The good shepherd, he loves you. He desires you to follow him, that you would experience his abundant life today. Today, I would encourage you, if you don't know him personally, today can be the day that you surrender to the good shepherd. You can trust him uh, for life and life abundant. And the way you do that is simply uh, recognizing your own sin as a sheep, your own, your own brokenness inside and in your need for forgiveness, the forgiveness that only Jesus can provide as the gate, as the one way back to God. If you would simply admit your sin before God, believe that Jesus is God's Son, and confess Him as your Lord today, we would encourage you to take that step of faith today and, and call out to Him. Because the Bible promises everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, the Good Shepherd, will be saved. You can be saved today. But today, if you're, if you're one of the sheep, I want to remind you that you can trust him as he leads you. Again, as, as we seek to follow Jesus in our life, it is often riddled with uncertainty and, and things that appear frightening, frightening to us, things that can be intimidating. But we, ha we are led by a good shepherd who goes before us, who leads the way, who gives us the victory, who fights our battles, who protects us from the enemy. And so we can trust him as the one who leads us. We can trust him as the one who protects us from the enemy, who, who gives us victory over sin in our life. And we can trust him as the one who will keep us forever. Brothers and sisters, we have an amazing shepherd this morning. He deserves our obedience. He deserves our trust. Won't you trust him today? Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we come before you, thankful for you as our good shepherd. We love you and we praise you 
And Lord, I pray for those today who, who are wandering out there like sheep without a shepherd, who need your care and your guidance in their life. Father, I pray that today they would recognize you as that one that they need to surrender to. Lord, let us, uh, let us see you do your work today. And Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters today that, that still need your leadership. Lord, we don't outgrow that. As we follow you, we, it's a daily journey, dying to ourselves, picking up the cross and, and following you. Lord, I pray for new faith to arise today, new confidence in you as our good shepherd, that we would not fear because you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. Lord, you have prepared heaven for us, and we have much to look forward to. Lord, we thank you for, for leading us and guiding us into that abundant life. May we experience it by faith today. We ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as, as if you're seeking to take a new step of faith today, we would encourage you to take that step, whatever it is. You can let us know by going to our website, mrbc.us, and click on Next Steps. You can let us know of your desire to maybe trust Jesus as your Lord, take the step of baptism as a proclamation of your faith, maybe join our church family, or maybe rededicate your life to the Lord to renew, make a fresh commitment. One of us would love to be able to reach out and pray with you if you would take that step of faith today. But let us continue to worship the Lord together in song. But he brought me all his love for me. his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am.
And now as we conclude this service with a time of prayer, <clears throat> I would like to take a moment to pray for those who are struggling with COVID, um, who may be in the hospital or those who are struggling at home. Um, so if you would, please bow your heads with me as we pray. Dear Lord, you are mighty. Lord, we rely on you for so much and for everything. You are sovereign over all and in control of all things, Lord. And because of this, I pray that for those who are hurting, for those who are struggling with this nasty COVID-19 virus. <clears throat> Lord, I pray that you would put your healing hand upon them, that you would provide comfort for them, that you would just be there and flex your supernatural might and heal them, Lord. We pray that you would give the doctors wisdom as they make decisions for care. Lord, we pray that any discomfort that our members are having would be let up quickly, Lord. We pray that we pray, we pray these things because we know that you are powerful and that you are a God of mercy. So please continue to show mercy on us. Lord, I pray that you may grant, according to the riches of your glory, to be strengthened with power in the inner man through your Spirit, and that the Messiah may dwell in our hearts through faith. I pray that being rooted and firmly established in love, we may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length, width, height, and depth of your love. And to know the Messiah's love that surpasses knowledge, so that we may be filled with the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power of that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace. <laughs>